To begin with today, I wanted to take a moment to show you how to create a very basic stamped background with the new Hello Sunshine set. The set comes with this um, starburst um, circular stamp, and of course you can use this um, to create patterns or designs, but it was actually um, designed, I designed it to allow you to use it as a placement tool for the various rays of the sun. Now what you would want to do is to stamp this in a light color that would kind of fade into your background after you were done stamping. I suggest using um, soft stone or a color um, in the pastel range of the scheme you're working with. So if you're working with pinks, maybe um, sweet blush. If you're working with oranges, maybe lemon tart. But for the purpose of the video, I'm going to be stamping mine in Scarlet Jewel so that you can see a bit better and see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to stamp this in the middle of my block of cardstock here. Now the completed sunburst point to point um, will be over a little, a little over five and a half inches wide. But when you have a circle, it's not going to fill an entire card front. Um, the corners would end up being just a little bit short. So I've cut a smaller block of cardstock um, that measures just shy of three and three quarters by five inches. And that's what I'm working with. Now I've got one of the, um, the solid sun ray or wedge, whatever you want to call it. And I'm making it with raspberry fizz. And now normally if I was stamping this for an actual project, I would have stamped this guide, like I said earlier, in a lighter color, like sweet blush or um, soft stone. But for the purpose of the video, I'm going to, um, I've done it in a darker color here. So now that I've inked that up, I'm going to go ahead and stamp my first wedge. And as you can see, what you want to do is you want to line the point up with the very center of your guide and then lay the rest of it in place. And if you can see here, the lines on either side of this wedge um, that are on the guide fit perfectly so I know exactly where to stamp that wedge. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work my way around And just from practicing a bit from with this set, um, you want to make sure that you always get your point right on the center. If you end up back this way a little bit, um, they may not line up as well as you would like. So I'm just going to keep going around here. Now, one of the things that I played around with a lot while I was designing this set is making sure that everything was spaced perfectly so that you could stamp this pattern um, with every other um, slice being an alternate color and it ended up being even. So all that work is already figured out and done for you. So you can see with the guide how easy it is to um, line this up and like I said if you stamp the guide in a lighter color you can't even tell it was ever there once you've completed stamping the whole background obviously on mine it's a bit more prominent because I use that darker color but um, that guide just makes all the difference in the world Now when inking up bold stamps like this one, it's important to remember to do lots of little taps. This helps you to get a really good, really good ink coverage on your stamp. Point first and lay the rest of the stamp down. Once again, line up that point first and line it up with your guides and it comes out perfect every time.
point down and stamp. And as you can see, it's a perfectly laid out sunburst pattern. And you can, at this point, you know, add something to the center or use it as is. Um, there's a lot of different options, but that is the basics of how you go about it. So this is what my finished piece looks like. And I wanted to show you really quick. Here is uh, the one I did um, previously. And this one is the one I did correctly. I used Sweet Blush Ink to stamp the guide. And as you can see, it 100% disappears um, once you stamp the rays on there. I like this one where you can still see the guide. So this is what your finished product would look like after you were done. And it just opens up so many options. I'm sitting here looking at this and thinking about all the design opportunities this has. I know this is just so fun. I know you'd have fun with it too. I wanted to share you another technique that you can do with the new um, Hello Sunshine stamp set and the coordinating die. Um, right here is one of the dies that's included in the die set and it actually cuts wedges um, to perfectly coordinate with the wedge stamps um, in the set. I've already gone ahead and die cut eight of these so that was doing four passes with this die because it cuts two at a time. From uh, This is from Simply Chartouche cardstock and here I have a background I stamped just like I showed you a moment ago only this time I used aqua mist ink uh, for the guide in the center and the actual rays are stamped with Hawaiian shores and I just wanted to show you how this um, collection of products allows you to mix things up and really get creative um, with your creations so I've, I've got here a ripe, the ripe avocado ink pad and I have this um, another one of the ray stamps and um, this one is just a bunch of lines radiating from the center, which I love. Um, it looks just so um, beautiful, the way it's darker on one end and kind of gets lighter towards the other because the lines spread out. But what I wanted to show you is that what you can do is you can stamp these wedges with the different patterned images in the stamp set. So I'm taking um, my die cut pieces and as you can see here it looks so pretty with those lines stamped on it. It really adds a lot. I'm going to go ahead and do all of these the same way. So now that I've got all these stamped what I could do is um, just go ahead and adhere these into place around the um, Hawaiian Shores wedges that I stamped directly onto my pig bear. I love the texture of having a layer of cardstock stamped, cardstock stamped. It adds a really unique look to the background. But I wanted to take this a step further and show you um, what else you could do um, with, the, with the dies. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to run a piece of 1 8 inch score tape down the center of each of these pieces. And I'm just going to show you how to do one to just kind of save time for the video. I'm going to remove the score tape and I'm going to get a little piece of scratch paper here. And I've got some green glitter from Doodlebug. And I'm going to sprinkle that onto the score tape like this and there you have some sparkle added down the center of that ray which just looks amazing I wish you could see this in person so I'm just gonna go through and finish up the remainder of the rays in this way okay now I've got all of my um, wedges uh, glittered exactly the way I, that I want them and I'm going to just put a little bit of tape in each of these areas here. And it's just a matter of going about adhering these into place. And they all will fit perfectly because 
of all of the measuring that's already been done, been done for you. I'm not too worried about how the center looks because I'm going to be covering that up, but if you were going to not cover it up, um, you could just run a little bit of extra adhesive in the middle there. Okay, I'm going to continue going around here, hearing all of these into place. So there we have that. All of those are adhered. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to take a craft knife. And I'm going to trim these from the back because I want this to be a complete looking block with straight edges. So I'm just going to go. all the way around here. And it's much easier to trim from the back than from the front in my opinion. Even if you're using scissors and don't tend to use a craft knife, this just makes it a bit easier so everything is more precise. Just using the edge of the cardstock as my guide there. And there is the finished um, sunburst pattern with stamping um, coordinated with cardstock uh, wedges and a little glitter thrown into the mix. Um, I could probably do a video that's three hours long about all the stuff that you can do with Hello Sunshine, but um, I'm going to go ahead and just show you my few favorite techniques that I've been working on. Um, I'm starting a new project here, and I am going to stamp the guideline image um, on a vintage cream cardstock here. And I'm actually going to do something different. Um, I have here a piece of vellum and I die cut um, the wedges from, um, from that vellum. And I'm going to use that as a guide for a little bit of masking. The good thing about these dies is that um, they really take all the guesswork out of this. The wedges are already pre-measured. You know they're going to fit perfectly in a circle. Um, it just It's a win-win situation and just makes it so much easier to do this particular technique. Well, really any of the techniques um, for creating these starburst patterns. So what I've done is I've lined these up, uh, lined the mask up that I've created with this vellum with the guidelines. And I have a little blending sponge, and I want to be really um, detailed with this. So I'm using just a little triangle of it with my hands, rather than using my blending tool. And what I want to do is just sponge a bit of this color within the mask. And right now I'm using the Harvest Gold. And I don't want to do the whole thing. I want to kind of make it lighter towards the end here. So I'm just kind of doing strokes outward. Okay. So when I remove that, you can see I've got that really cool effect there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip a section that I want to stay the cream color. And I'm lining this template up. And this time I'm going to use Summer Sunrise. What I want to do, my end result, is to have a gradient look where it goes from lightest to darkest. So I'm gradually 
making my way up to darker colors. So to, it's important for me to get these edges, these outside edges. in the center part. And my template was a little bit shy in this corner so I'm just going to smudge a little bit extra on there. And then I'm going to move on to my next color which is orange zest. And once again starting in that center working my way out and if you work from lightest color to darkest color you won't have any trouble with the colors blending mixing with each other rather you don't have to change your blending sponge and it's just a lot easier that way so there's the orange zest Moving on to Canyon Clay. I was just talking to a friend the other day, Suzanne. Hi, Suzanne about how much I've ended up loving the Canyon Clay color. It's so um, neutral and I wasn't really expecting that and I've loved experimenting and pairing it up with um, different colors that I wouldn't have anticipated. It's become one of my new favorite colors. If you haven't paired up with Aquamist or Hawaiian Shores yet then you need to get on that. <laughs> Okay, so there's my Canyon Clay section, and now I'm going to do one more in terracotta tile. And now I'm not going all the way around for this particular background because of my design plans. So um, I'm only doing the upper half here. So there's that. And as you can see, I mean, you could totally use this um, like this, but I want to just show you one more step that you can do to take it, um, you know, to another level. I've got this stamp right here that I'm going to add, and it's actually um, some um, dotted lines of various sizes. Um, and I am going to start with Harvest Gold, and I'm going to work my way around again just like I did before. Now what you could do is you could go every other and fill in those blank spots, but I really want to stamp um, directly on top of the mast areas that I created. And that creates this really cool tone on tone dotted effect on, on that wedge. So now I'm going to grab Summer Sunrise. top of the masked summer sunrise area and then I'm going to get orange zest and that is followed by canyon clay but not least terracotta tile. And 
And you can just see how gorgeous that is. Um, this, the graduation going this way and doing that mat little masking step first really adds a whole new, new dimension to the project. The next technique I'm going to show you is just piecing um, a sunburst pattern together with pattern paper. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this die makes it so easy to assemble these because they're already pre-measured um, to perfectly form a circle and allow you to alternate colors um, without any extra overlap or unevenness. What I did is I went ahead and I die cut um, several pieces of the Summer Sunrise pattern pack with that die. And now I'm going to show you how I like to put adhesive on these to make sure that I get things adhered right down to the point. I use 1 8 inch score tape and run that right along either side of the triangle. It's really easy and um, it just ensures that everything stays put right down to the point. Now I've already done the backs of um, all of these pieces. And I'm actually starting with a large piece of cardstock. I want to cut it down after I get everything assembled this time. I've got some Summer Sunrise ink and I'm just going to stamp my guidelines. I love the guidelines. They help so much. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start adhering these various patterns in place in this using the guide point first and then placing the paper. Now for this particular project I want to um, adhere these blocks, the wedges rather, um, every other space. So Notice I've omitted this space here. And then I'm going to go to this one here. And this particular design, the things I have in mind, um, I'm making sure that this center comes out perfect. I'll show you why um, once we get to that step. but. It's essential at the moment. Now I know I want something a bit, this is a bit um, bold, more of a bold pattern and I would like to go right there so I'm going to turn this a bit and put that there and I'm going to go ahead and put these big polka dots here. And this guide just make it, makes it so easy to get everything positioned correctly. Get this here. last. So I'm working up here. Okay. So there I've got all my assembled uh, wedges. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim the stem. And this is something that I do pretty frequently. Um, I like to create you know, get creative with creating a background or whatnot. I do the same the same process when I stamp a background, and I like to cut it down after the fact, so that everything ends up exactly where I wanted it. So, to start with, I am going to go ahead and I am going to. Let's see. I want to cut this side down first. And my end result is just to have um, all of these trimmed so that the ends 
oh, extend all the way to the edge. Like right here you see this isn't long enough to go to that corner so I'm going to trim that off. So I end up with something that looks like this. You can just see how perfect that looks and how easy that was put together because of the guide and the stamp set and um, because of the die um, that creates the perfect wedges. Now what I wanted, you could definitely use this just like this. I mean it looks so cool but I just wanted to show you um, a fun technique. I'm going to use um, the largest uh, two and a quarter inch uh, limitless layer circle die, just the standard die. And what I want to do is I want to cut out the center of this. Now to find the center, um, what I did is I, I can't really show you on video easily, but what I did was I held this die behind this piece um, up to a window and it allowed me to get that circle centered and I made um, small pencil marks on this front side around where the die um, would need to go to be centered and that way I can flip it over here to the top and run it through my die cut machine lined up with those pencil marks. So I've just run through this through my die cutting machine and I'm going to pop this out and I wanted to show you what you can do on your project is now turn this any way you want and re-adhere it back together. See, you can mix up the patterns. Now you could line it up with um, alternate patterned wedges or you can go every other, kind of mixing it up. There's so many different things um, that you could do with that. I wanted to show you another technique. Um, this time it's a bit of a different placement and uh, than just doing an entire background. And um, I'm going to be pairing the lined wedges with heat embossing, which is stunning. I can't wait for you to see it. So I'm starting off with the guide stamp and I am going to stamp this right at the bottom of this block of cardstock and I used regular dye new leaf um, ink because I'm going to be heat embossing. I don't want the powder to stick to that portion, just what I'm going to stamp. So after I've stamped that, I'm going to go ahead and wipe this whole thing down with embossing buddy to get rid of the static and help maintain my crisp images. I'm going to take this stamp with the Versamark pad and I'm going to use that guide I stamped. I'm going to go ahead and stamp that first. other and if you wanted a different look you could do every space but I just really like the way it looks doing every other I think it just looks kind of cool got that one Last one. It's like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of scrap paper here and I'm going to put gold filigree embossing powder on there. Tap off the excess like that. I just finished um, heat embossing this with my heat gun. I just took it over there real quick. 
and you can see I ended up with this. And now that all that's left to do is do some basic design um, with some other stamps and a couple sentiment sets. I've got one more quick technique that I want to um, share with you today. As I talked about earlier in the video, there's just so many options with the new Hello Sunshine set. I know I haven't even begun to touch the surface yet, but I hope that something that I've shown you today kind of piques your interest and inspires you to create something. Um, I'm actually going to show you how to use these stamps points outward um, to create a um, really cool background. It looks a little bit different than the other ones we made. I've gone ahead and inked this up in Sweet Blush and I've stamped it point side out in the center of this big block of cardstock that I have. And I'm going to go ahead and ink it up in Berry Sorbet now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp it directly perpendicular to at a right angle to the original one in the opposite direction just like that. Then I'm going to go ahead and fill in the blanks a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and ink this with Berry Sorbet again. And I'm going to go right in between these two points that I already created. And I'm going to do the Berry Sorbet one more time. right in between these two points like that. And I'm going to go back to the sweet blush and notice right here I'll even mark this with the pencil I'm kind of using right here as my center bevel point. You get to draw yourself a dot if it makes things easier for you. But I'm going to do the send first centered on that dot and I'm going to do right in between those like that. And I'm actually going to move on to Harvest Gold now. Kind of the colors in this card kind of remind me of lemonade. That's what I was going for. Okay, and this goes off the cardstock a little bit, but that's okay because I'm going to be trimming this down later anyway. again. Then I just have to add sweet blush one more time. Between those two points. And as you can see, it creates this really cool um, variegated pattern, a completely different look than some of the other projects we've created today. Just like I did earlier in the video, I'm going to trim this down a little bit and I know I want this piece to be five and a quarter inches, so I'm going to work my way down here until I get to five and a quarter and there I've got it that five a quarter on the side so I know that's where I want to be 
and I want to leave all of these points just like that so I don't want to trim it all on that side. Now what I do want to trim is I'm going to trim this in half and see. And I'm really liking the way that looks. I think I'm going to go for it with using this like this on my card. I've showed you a lot of things today. Um, we've stamped with the rays, point set it out like on this last project. And we worked on uh, creating a big sunburst pattern just with the stamps for this card here. We also did the same type of technique by stamping the rays once again, but throwing in some die cut cardstock uh, rays in the mix with a little bit of glitter. And of course, we also experimented a bit with um, creating masks and sponging and stamping overlays on top of those areas for dimension. And uh, of course, that works with uh, so many different um, objects to use as a focal point. And we can't forget mixing up the pattern packs um, and the different papers that um, those contain to create um, unique sunburst patterns. And last but not least, there is the heat embossing that we did. So as you can see, there's a variety of techniques to try, and I look forward to seeing your take with this set.